Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step 1 covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step 2 builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, Step 3 walks you through how to get the best results when entering the Arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So, if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. Alright, let's get into today's Step 2 release. Enjoy! Hey guys, Zaw here, and welcome to part 2 of our 3 part series called Free Steps to Gladiator. In part 1 we covered building your character, now in step 2 we're going to be talking about preparing for PvP, including how to min max your damage and also how to best utilise your crowd control. Two things you ideally need to have a full understanding about before you enter the arena. Ok then, so to begin let's talk about your damage rotation. Assassination Rogue's rotation is fairly simple and consists of three factors. First is your consistent damage, next is your damage during a setup, and then third is of course your opener. Your consistent damage is made up of two bleeds, Garou and Rapture. These two damage over time effects contribute a large amount to your overall damage, and letting them drop can be detrimental to your consistent pressure. So the basics for your consistent damage are to maintain your Garou and Rapture on your primary target, and then mutilate to build combo points to then spend on Envenom. If you can't reach your target to mutilate, you should replace mutilate with poison knife. Now there is a few tips and tricks you can use to maximise your consistent pressure. First up is your combo point usage. Often at times you'll find yourself at 4 combo points. If you already have rapture up on the target and you're not playing with system shock, you should instead be using a 4 combo point in venom here. This is to not overcap on combo points as Mutilate can give up to 4 combo points thanks to the Seal Fate passive, and Mutilate consists of both a main hand and off hand attack. This means you could potentially be wasting up to 3 combo points if you Mutilate when at 4, sacrificing a lot of potential damage. Our next tip is understanding Pandemic Dots. Pandemic refers to how you refresh dots before they expire, and the remaining duration will add on to the next. This works for both Garot and Rapture. What I mean by this is that Rapture lasts for 24 seconds when used with 5 combo points. If I do another 5 combo point Rapture straight after, my Rapture will be 30% longer on that target, meaning you can potentially get a 32 second Rapture onto the target. Ok so, what's this got to do with min maxing your damage you might ask? Well if you're about to do a setup, then knowing this helps greatly. During burst windows you ideally don't want to be reapplying your bleeds as they deal no upfront damage. So even if your rupture is at 8 seconds on the target and you can safely reapply it with 5 combo points, knowing that you're not wasting any potential damage as your rupture will extend past the 24 second mark. And exactly the same rules apply for Garou, however as it's only 18 seconds the maximum duration you can get is 24 seconds. This is just a great tip to allow you to extend your burst windows for longer and give you something to do during your downtime. Now these two things are situational, but worth knowing. Multi bleeding as a rogue not only deals some great spread pressure, but can also increase your single target damage heavily. This is due to the venomous wounds passive ability, this allows you to gain energy if your bleed still damage to a poisoned enemy. You can do this easily by applying Rupture or Garou and then making sure you maintain your poisons with Poison Knife if they are ranged or Fan of Knives if they are in melee range, as Poison Knife has a 100% chance to apply your poison and Fan of Knives an increased chance. However keep in mind if you're playing with a class like a mage, it's often not worth the time as they will often be removing your blades with Polymorph. Also always remember Fan of Knives is a great way to AoE apply your poisons, so giving the enemies a slow and also a healing reduction debuff. 
Now, Burstin as assassination revolves around three main cooldowns, Vendetta, Toxic Blade and to a lesser extent Marked for Death. Your burst window should always be during a kidney shot, this is for two reasons. First is that it obviously locks down the target and secondly the target should already have Rupture and Garot at this point and kidney shot implies internal bleeding. This again increases your re energy regeneration the same way your other two dots do giving you some insane energy regeneration during your kidney shots. To combine with your kidney shot you should be saving your toxic blade. This ability not only deals some decent damage but increases your nature damage by 30% to that target. So with that being said let's look at a standard burst window. First make sure you have your garrote and rupture up onto the target and then get 5 combo points. Now I say get 5 combo points, if you end up with 4 you can instead use toxic blade before your kidney shot. If not, use it the global after. Now you're going to want to maximize your envenoms during your toxic blade window, so just spam mutilate until you can envenom, remembering to envenom at 4 combo points if you're not playing with system shock. Now Vendetta is your biggest burst cooldown and should be used the same way as toxic blade, simply use it a global before or after your kidney shot. Combined again with your Toxic Blade, same as before, you'll want to have your Rupture and Garot up ideally beforehand. We'll touch on Vendetta usage a little more in step 3 of this series, and our last cooldown is Marked for Death. Now this is simply 5 combo points on demand. Of course you want to use this when you're at 0 combo points, as to not over cap, but how you use this is heavily dependent on the situation. If you instantly need the lockdown and don't have time to build up combo points, you should be using this on kidney shot. If not, just use it during a toxic blade window to secure an extra envenom. Alright, and our final way to min-max your damage is via your opener. I'm not going to go fully in depth on different openers as we have other videos covering that exact topic, but saying that you should know you gain access to your stealth abilities for 3 seconds once opening thanks to subterfuge, and when using Garot from stealth it's empowered. Not only does it give you extra combo points with the default trait Shrouded Suffocation, but will also silence the target and deal increased damage, as when used from stealth Garot does not ensue a cooldown. This means getting multiple of these up in an opener can help boost your damage tenfold. It's also worth noting that Cheap Shot can also be used to gain some increased lockdown. Now Assassination also has some interactions with other classes that you may not know. First is that Envenom is obviously nature damage. This means it goes through physical immunities such as Blessing of Protection, allowing you to score kills where you might not otherwise. Another great tip is that Shadow Step will always position you behind the target. This means that you'll be able to land abilities through defensive cooldowns with positional requirements, for example evasion or die by the sword. So for example if an enemy rogue evasions, you can simply step behind them and instantly kidney shot, despite them having a 100% dodge chance. Cheap Shot and Garot can also not be dodged, blocked or parried, so again go through cooldowns like evasion and die by the sword. And last up is Vendetta, it allows you to see classes in stealth, so if you pop on a rogue and they vanish away it's going to do absolutely nothing as you can still see full vision of the target. Last up for step 2 in our 3 steps to gladiator series we're going to be looking at how to best make the most out of your crowd control, rogues have cheap shot, blind, Garot from stealth, kidney shot, sap and finally smoke bomb at their disposal. We're going to look at these abilities and when best to use them, starting with kidney shot. This ability unlike for sub is mainly used onto your kill target for the lockdown and the internal bleeding damage and energy regeneration and as a tool to set up kills, for example kidney shot vendetta smoke bomb and you kill inside of the kidney shot. However, in some rare situations it can also be used as a crowd control to either peel for a teammate, stop an important cast or even extend CC chains in compositions like Rogue Mage. To best use Kidney Shot offensively, always make sure you have your bleeds up before using it. This will allow you to maximise your damage during your Kidney Shot window, but we touched on this earlier in this video. Cheap Shot can only be used from stealth, this means openers, vanish or when you get restalves. Primarily this is used for extra CC on healers, you cheap shot the healer into some follow up crowd control such as polymorph from your mage. Kidney shot primarily goes onto healers, 
but if you also need that extra bit of lockdown, you can often vanish for a cheap shot. Say for instance if you are swapping onto an enemy druid, and if he gets out of the kidney shot, he can then frenzy regeneration and use bear form, but if you cheap shot DR, you can sometimes score kills where you wouldn't otherwise. Cheap shot is also great for peeling. If you vanish, you can then cheap shot the entire enemy team, allowing you or your partners to live that extra bit longer. Now, Garo only gains its silence and effect when used from stealth. This means it's often only used as a tool to open on targets, or when you have subterfuge or vanish up for some extra damage. Saying that, it's also great for healer swaps. A kidney shot into vanish cheap shot followed up with a Garo can often give you the lockdown required to finish a target off. Again, similar to Cheap Shot, you can also vanish and use Garo as a way to peel against casters. Now, Blind is Assassination's strongest crowd control and has multiple uses as with most of the rogue crowd control. The standard use, however, is to simply blind a healer and then follow up with a sap if they do not drink it. You can also use it defensively to blind a DPS to peel for your team. If they don't have trinket, they will subsequently have to then sit the sap. Now, when using Blind, you should always make sure you have Vanish or Shadow Mound available. This is so you can easily follow up the blind with a sap, and is where the power of this ability truly lies. Sap can only be used on targets that are out of combat. This means use of this ability needs to be precise. The most common use is blinding a target without a trinket, and then using your Vanish to secure the sap, as the target of your blind will always drop out of combat. Also in openers, you can most of the time sap a target or a healer to give you the best possible opener. But, as with most abilities, there is always situations you can find to use sap. You can use it on people who drop out of combat. For instance, if a healer goes for a drink and you have your vanish available, you can go for a sap, and can also sap off things like kidney shot, polymorph, or psychic screams. Smoke Bomb is also a very important tool for Rogue when it comes to crowd control. Teams are often forced to hold their trinket for this very ability, as if caught inside of a Smoke Bomb kidney shot, you're at a huge risk of dying. Now, Smoke Bomb can be used two ways. Its best use is to secure a kill on a target without a trinket. However, players often hold their trinket for this very reason, so it can be used as a way to simply force a trinket out of your opponents. It's also a great way to secure a kill on a target without a trinket. A kidney shot into Smoke Bomb can deny all healing on a target for the entire duration, helping you to score a kill. Okay then guys, that just about rounds off step 2 in our 3 Steps to Gladiators series. Stay tuned for step 3, where we are going to be covering entering the arena, including picking the correct composition and the objectives of your class once you are inside of the game. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill if you enjoyed this video.